we're in the second part and this morning uh, we have two presentations uh, coming up uh, uh, from our platinum sponsors core technologies and seven layers um, in the first presentation um, we're going to hear more about uh, how you build digital custody asset solutions by core technology um, originally planned was that the CTO of CORE would do the presentation, Thomas Taroni. Unfortunately, Thomas is down with pneumonia um, and uh, we decided it's better he doesn't come with pneumonia here. It's not COVID, yes, really. <laughs> it's kind of, you have to be uh, really special to get pneumonia in the COVID time. But uh, <laughs> anyway, um, he's getting better, but he's not healthy enough to do the presentation. So. Instead, we have the CEO of uh, CORE here, Carla Bünger. Carla Bünger, uh, this is already her second uh, digital business. Uh, she had one of the first web stores in, in, uh, done before, and now he's, she's a CEO of CORE technology. And uh, rather than me talking, uh, Carla, please. Good morning, and thank you for the opportunity to um, talk to you today. Um, as I said, I'm representing my uh, co-founder and business partner Thomas, who is certainly the more technical um, person to do this in front of you, who are also technical people. I will try to answer your questions as good as I can, but I'm a salesperson, so I will try to not sell anything today, <laughs> but at least show you what Thomas has built, show you what Thomas has built, and then um, maybe inspire you to um, do the same or use some parts of it. So my presentation today is about core elements on implementing um, a custody, digital assets custody solution for corporates. Um, I think I need two introductory slides to explain who we are and what we do. So Core Technologies is a company that builds, integrates and operates scalable solutions on and for blockchain technology. Um, so we do this in essence for financial intermediaries or the financial industry um, and we have created four products that we actually sell today so this is my last sales slide I promise <laughs> so um, we have created four products um, essentially we offer software along the whole value chain of digital assets um, it starts with the first element where you have to store digital assets which is the custody solution I'm going to talk about today um, secondly, in order to kind of integrate this into um, uh, existing systems or core banking systems and to um, have a permanently accurate um, uh, statement, you need analytics, toolbox and um, big data systems to make sure that AML um, and, and um, governance is maintained. So that's our analytics toolbox. The third thing is if you want to store digital assets, at some point you have to create them. Um, so we also offer um, a digital asset issuance platform, which allows to create, sell, trade, and manage digital assets along their whole life cycle. So that's like smart contract writing and so on, all that stuff. Um, and the last product we are offering to our clients is actually, well, if you work on and for blockchain, you actually um, need fast access to the different protocols. And um, in order to have that, you need to run nodes. Run Ethereum nodes, Bitcoin nodes, Hyperledger nodes, Corda nodes, like there are an incredible variety of nodes. And since we are running them anyway, we can also offer to our clients that we run them for them. Um, and, you know, I think a client that does digital asset stuff um, will certainly want to run its own Ethereum node because this is the most used protocol at this point of time. But maybe like, um, I don't know, protocols that are not that frequent or not, not that present every day, it's better to outsource it to someone else. So that's what we are offering today. All this on a SaaS level, so software as a service, and, um, and this is based on our own infrastructure so we also offer infrastructure as a service and this is all based in our own data centers that we run here exclusively and only in switzerland um, this is based on ibm linux one technology and of course the sequoia hsms that's what i'm going to present you today 
So, um, what are the inherent needs of corporates when they want to store digital assets? So one very important element is that this technology, digital assets, is a technology that has been created or is, is coming up from the private sector and not from the corporate sector. Traditionally, often when we had new technologies coming in, they were established by very large corporates that then implemented them um, above the corporate level and from the corporate level they drilled down or they tickled down into the private level. This is a completely different situation because this technology comes bottom up. It's uh, uh, only one person who created, or only one person, like Satoshi Nakamoto created the Bitcoin blockchain. And now actually corporates are struggling to integrate this into their system. So we need to make a kind of private technology corporate, uh, and raise it to the corporate level. And this poses significant issues. So because of the inherent vulnerability of digital assets, which is that if there is a theft or if you lose the digital assets, they are unrecoverable, security is the most important element of it all. However, so security is possible to make this all secure, but the highest security always comes at the detriment of usability. And this technology is only going to really break through if the usability is on a level where a corporate can easily um, transact and work with digital assets because if it's too complicated, no one's going to use it. So the big problem is the trade-off between security and usability. And because it has been a technology that was, or because it is a technology that has been created from the private sector, there's a complete lack of corporate governance rules or implementation possibilities into existing systems. So basically it's three elements that don't help each other in executing it. This is how um, the, the technology from the private sector came to be. So normally to store a digital asset, you have three kinds of wallets. You have a hot wallet, which is typically a wallet that you have on an exchange. Um, and as we all learned in the press from two days ago, KuCoin hacked, $150 million lost. Um, so the hot wallet at an exchange is really vulnerable. So you can see security low, usability very good because you can interact fast. You can, this is really a liquidity buffer wallet where you can use it as a liquidity buffer. Um, but I think the first thing I learned when I started to learn about digital assets, everyone told me never, ever, ever store digital assets on a wallet in an exchange, never. So this is the risk. In order to make this more secure, you can then have a warm wallet. A warm wallet normally is an app or a software that you download on one of your devices and then you store your digital assets there. Convenience is a bit better, but still security is not super high. If you want to be very secure, you have a cold wallet. A cold wallet um, has, however, manual processes and it takes you quite some time to take the digital assets from a manual wallet into a hot wallet where you can actually do something with it. So, complete difficult situation. And then, as I said, a complete lack of scalability um, lack of integration into existing systems and lack of integration possibilities of corporate governance rules. So in essence, a technology that is completely unfit for the corporate world. So we at CORE thought about how can we make this work? How can we make this happen? How can we create a product that actually banks can use to offer digital assets to their clients? And um, this is what we came up with. So we have maximum security, maximum usability and the possibility to implement corporate governance rules. You can only do that if you have infrastructure. And this is what we had already before um, founding core technologies. So we can rely on an existing infrastructure that is bulletproof, it's beyond banking grade, and it has been built already for quite some time. We're running all data centers for over 10 years now. So, because actually to build this up from scratch only to manage digital assets is quite difficult because at this point of time, there are not so many people earning decent money with digital assets. 
I think um, companies who really got rich or are very um, successful with digital assets at this point of time are exchanges or very early adopters of um, these kind of services. But like a bank today in Switzerland or anywhere in the world, I don't think that they have an interesting revenue stream yet with digital assets. So no one is ready to really invest a lot of money at this point of time. Everyone is more or less at the testing phase. So how does it really work? Actually, um, we have um, created a solution where you can build core rooms. It's, um, and the core room is like you can, you have an infinite number of core rooms you can create. Um, let's say, for example, we have um, a group of five people that can um, initiate a transaction and then we say the problem is that of these five people, people at least three people have to approve the transaction um, so one is initializing it and two others have to approve the transaction so that the transaction actually really happens. This happens through mobile so we are completely mobile enabled and um, basically the, the first person sends out the transaction and the, or the, the, the transaction request, and the other two get um, a so-called uh, transaction challenge, a token challenge, and then they have to, with their two-factor authentication, approve the transaction, and then actually the, the, uh, the signatures are transmitted into the HSM of Securusys, and then deployed through our nodes into the um, protocol of the respective token. Since you are all developers, um, I thought I will use this opportunity to show you directly the code of what we are proposing to our clients. So we, we deploy the product through um, API, um, APIs, and we have this all on our Swagger API um, platform. And um, uh, Geraldine, can you please switch to the platform if that's possible? We've tested this multiple times. I'm sure it's going to fail now because it worked already at least 10 times. But this is a demo effect. Perfect. Thank you. So can you scroll down a little bit? Yes, perfect. So you see um, all this, uh, let me see the pointer. So all this, uh, yeah, so all this was the Swagger API for the custody solutions. Basically, our clients, this is what our clients get. This is what the product looks like. And then this, I know it's too small, you cannot read it, but this little part here is how you create a Chrome on the, on the Swagger API. So basically, um, you can say here um, how many people need to sign a transaction so that it is valid and you, uh, and the, the above level, you say how much time can maximally uh, elapse until the transaction is not approved. And that's it. So if you want to see more about the Swagger APIs or have questions on that, uh, we can surely um, um, agree on a demonstration and then you have an individual session with deep technological um, stuff. Can you get to the next slide? Thank you. So in essence, um, a modern custody solution that is relevant for corporates today is uh, based on a banking grade security infrastructure, ideally beyond banking grade, that is not possible. You have to implement multi-authorization procedures. Um, and um, I think there it is very important that the business logic and the um, signatures and the transaction validations happens inside the HSM and not outside somewhere in something programmed somewhere in the world where you don't know where the back doors are. Third, that's why we need the HSM internal transaction execution. And it always helps if you say you're Swiss quality, Swiss based, Swiss uh, everything. So <laughs> good custody solutions come from Switzerland. <laughs> Next slide, please. This is how we've built the, the architecture today. Um, so you see here, this is uh, our three um, data centers that we have. And in this infrastructure service, you have the so-called 
um, uh, microservices dockerized um, in, the, in, the, in the individual microservices. So these are all Docker containers that you can easily plug and play and manage and modularly build together. And as I said, the end client interface is completely um, mobile enabled um, and we can then adapt the, the software services to from the back end to the, the client business logic and integrate it into their existing inf um, infrastructure and legacy systems. This is the machine that made it possible. And um, I'm sure you've heard already a lot about it from um, Marcel in the speech before. Um, we have decided to go for the Primus X. Um, it is a device that uh, we have implemented with the help of Securosis and we are very happy on the um, possibilities that it gives us. We can support up to 60, 70 protocol tokens. So um, it really gives us flexibility and possibilities to um, reach our clients' needs. And these are the clients that we have been serving. So not all our clients. IBM is not a client, it's, a, it's rather a business partner and Securosys is a business partner. Um, but we are very um, happy to serve the Swiss ecosystem quite extensively with our technology and they are all aware that this would not be possible without the HSM of Securosys. On this, um, I am very open for your questions. I hope it uh, sparked some interest in the, the technology. Oh, I was a bit short. Thank you. Thank you, Carla. Um, yeah, we have quite some time for, for questions, so um, let's, let's start there. What do you mean with this Vista asset? This is hardware and software from Switzerland. Sorry, can you repeat the question? I didn't get it because of the mask, I'm sorry. What do you mean with the Swiss asset? It is a hardware and software from Switzerland. <laughs> yes, basically, um, if, if you have, you know, if you have local Swiss clients, um, they are bound also by, by the legislation and compliance to host their um, um, data in Switzerland. And, I mean, if you use, um, other suppliers that often have exposure to the United States, which is always a problem for a Swiss bank. So um, it is a huge advantage if you can say this is a company that is purely Swiss owned and the data centers are in Switzerland. The technology has been developed in Switzerland. We use infrastructure from Switzerland, except for IBM, which obviously is not Swiss, but you cannot be perfect. <laughs> Okay, uh, <clears throat> any, any other questions? I mean, um, yeah, Ross. Uh, just a question about, uh, we are always speaking about signature, mm -hmm. where you have, a, for example, a, a three, three people that have to sign something before the HSM sign with the, the real key. Uh, there is no, the, the, um, uh, I'm interested with the same service, but with encryption. Is it possible to, 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 uh, to have the same product with encryption? You have a file that is encrypted and you need to decrypt it. And you need one, two, three or four person to decrypt it. Is it, is it something that is, uh, is, uh, is total new and nobody is interested in such a product or do you think that uh, it could be or also uh, a nice product from uh, uh, from uh, securities and, and your technology i think it, can you re reply to that question um, i mean i mean that's possible to build it you know is it is is there a system available now that does this um, I'm not aware of it, um, though we'll be here now soon about uh, seven layers. They did some interesting thing with multi approval, and it comes back to multi approval for something, you know. So, um, if it's multi approval to access a file or share a file or something like that, that's it's, it's no different for us, you know. Um, 
and uh, Marcel kind of talked about this and said, you know, we are storing keys and making keys, but we're really also storing objects. So you can just have an object in the HSM and, and uh, decrypt it that way. Now, our storage in the HSM is limited, so <laughs> if you... Um, is he not money without a key? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and there, there, there needs to be other solutions, you know. But for example, we have uh, some crazy guy that the other day here from who has been talking to Hollywood, you know, and in Hollywood they have this problem that movies, you know, when they release them, that too many people, uh, you know, have to edit it, have to do some content thing, and they don't want to get these new movies out. So, and you need a way to protect the movies, you know. And now, and you look at the movie, it's very quickly several gigabytes, and several gigabytes uh, on the one hand to transfer it, on the other hand to decrypt it is not a snap that like that uh, they do it quickly, especially when they go to what is the latest 12K or you know we're we're using 4K screens, but the, the studios are doing bigger things. So it's interesting things that you can do and, and look at with these things and multi-signature is a solution for that too. So for sure it can be built and if somebody has uh, working on a solution for that or an application, please uh, <laughs> go to Francois, you know. Um, <laughs> he has a budget that can buy something. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, any other questions for Carla or Encore? Uh, we still have a few more minutes and I like to stick to the schedule rather than skip ahead to it quickly. I mean, maybe I have a, I have a question for you, Carla. So um, you're using these uh, very powerful Linux one. <laughs> Microsoft knows that um, actually OO doesn't like IBM. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it doesn't matter if what I like or don't like, it's what the customer needs to fulfill those requirements. But um, um, so you have these boxes and uh, you know when you have so much compute power, you know, did you guys ever think about joining Definity and offer the the excess power, compute power to have on the Definity internet computer, you know, so this is, this is the new business model, you know. That's actually exactly uh, what I also thought for quite some time, so I joined every Definity uh, uh, actually conference they did. Um, I remember that the last was in summer and um, um, it was really nice weather and I skipped the nice weather to listen to the Definity uh, conference. So yes, I mean, this is certainly going to be interesting and I was very thankful for the question of, I think it was you who asked if they will onboard um, data centers, um, uh, like third party data centers. So I'm looking forward to uh, hear what they want to do. I actually also have been in touch with them several times, but I think it's a bit too early. Yeah. It will come. It will come, <laughs> it will come, yeah. Um, then the other question is, um, you offering Core as a, as a service, you know, so, and this is great in Switzerland, you know, because you're in Switzerland. Uh, um, we all, I mean, we all, uh, people that uh, are in the, in the blockchain cryptocurrency business know that, for example, Germany has these rules. Um, the cryptos, the keys have to be stored in Germany. Mm -hmm. It's actually a really uh, a weird law because it doesn't say in the EU, it says in Germany. So, um, so if we have a German customer, how, how can we solve that? So. Yeah, that's a very good question. Thank you for asking. Um, so we are a pure technology provider. We're not um, a custody. We, we're not custodian. So it, this is really purely for um, a custodian who looks for software to store digital assets. Um, I would say if, if you are, it doesn't matter where you are based, we implement this um, either as a SaaS solution where effectively the data is, is uh, in Switzerland. If you are abroad and the regulation tells you to store the data abroad, I mean, we can use any other data center as well. But obviously, many banks normally have their own infrastructure anyway, and we would implement the whole solution inside uh, or on top of their infrastructure. So we also have the knowledge and know how to do that. Um, it really depends what the client has as kind of infrastructure and whether the security level we are keen to maintain can be maintained on the security uh, on the on the infrastructure level of this client. Uh, but of course, I mean we can always consult and 
say that we think you should buy IBM Linux World Service. <laughs> it's a yeah, bit it's, expensive, it's, though. It's, it's not the cheapest thing to buy but a Linux One Service, so, but uh, it's a very powerful machine. So. But at the same time, I really have to say, if you are a bank and you are going to um, store multiple millions of, of, of uh, digital assets, you should not shy away from spending also the money to make sure you have the most secure solution. But um, there are also a few others, and um, I know that Robert is also expert on this. So. Yeah, thank you. Um, I have time for one last question. So, so the one thing I saw on your on your customer slide is uh, a real estate token. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit what this is? A real estate token. Totally. And, uh, Totally. So one of our clients is um, is the Crowdly Token. Crowdly Token basically has created a platform where retail investors can start investing a hundred Swiss francs. So it starts from a hundred Swiss francs, um, and they basically they spend with a credit card or something. Uh, yeah, with with a transfer banking transfer, they they spend a hundred Swiss francs on the platform. They get tokens for the same amount, and then they can allocate these tokens to different real estate projects. Um, and based on this token allocation, they get interest rates on a daily basis. So this is a very granular system. And, um, and to, so once the retail investor wants to get out, he just sells his token and takes the money off the platform. And this is basically how it happens. But you need to have, it's, it's kind of a big data system because you need to calculate the interest rates on a daily basis and, and generate interest reports um, very regularly so that basically the investor knows in real time where his funds are standing. Um, in general, we see a big trend in this area because um, real estate is, um, has, as an asset is, is uh, tendentially something that is tokenized and especially real estate funds are interested in tokenizing in order to attract a different kind of um, investor base than up to now whereas was basically limited to very big pension funds. So um, yeah, it's an interesting domain to observe and to um, see how it evolves. Okay, thank you very much, Carla. Thank you.